Hi, in this quick video project, I'm going to show you how to make a simple wooden tray in VCarve. We're going to go through the basics of how to use the drawing tools, how to tool path the drawing, and then how to take that out to the machine and start cutting. So I already have my piece of wood and I've measured it. To get started, I'm going to hit create new file. And every time that you start a new project, you'll see this job setup menu over on the left hand side. You have to fill out the information in order to start your project, but keep in mind, you can always go back to change it later. So the first bit of information that we need to give it is the dimensions of our stock material. I just happen to have a piece of wood that's five inches by 24 inches and three quarters thick. So I'm going to input that here. And next we need to define the reference position for the project. The first question is about the height of the reference point. So we can either choose to reference the top of our material, or the bottom of our material, which VCarve calls the machine bed. Now there's no right or wrong here, but in this case, I'm just gonna choose machine bed, which just means I'll be touching off my tools to the surface under the stock material later when I go out to the machine. And now we need to choose the reference position location for the X and Y direction. And this will become the X zero, Y zero coordinate for the file. This reference point we set here corresponds to the origin point that we'll set later out on the machine. I'm just gonna leave it as the bottom left corner of the material this time, but again, there's no right or wrong choice. And then these last settings will change the 3D preview appearance and quality, but they don't really change the cut in any way. So I'm just gonna hit okay to confirm my job setup. Okay, so now you can see that the stock material is defined by this white rectangle. And it may be a little hard to see, but you can also follow these gray lines out from the bottom left corner to the rulers, and you'll see that they are positioned at zero in the X and zero in the Y. And then on the left-hand side, we can see the drawing tab is already open. One thing that I'd like to note really quickly is that this white square button towards the top will take you back to that job setup menu if you do need to make any changes later. Okay, so like I said, all of your CAD tools are going to be over in this menu on the left side and you can see down at the bottom that we're in the drawing tab so these are going to be all pretty much tools related to drawing or positioning of drawings to get started on the tray i'm going to create the outside rectangle using the rectangle tool i usually just skip past this first section that's related to where the rectangle would be positioned because it's easy to reposition stuff later on i'm going to change the corner type to a round external corner and then I'll just set the radius for right now to, uh, let's go with three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to make the size of the rectangle. I'll make it a square uh, with a length of four and three eighths inches and hit create. And presto, we have our rectangle. I'm done with the rectangle tool. So I'm going to hit close to exit back to the main drawing menu. So the next thing I need to do is reposition this wherever I want it to be on the material. So I'm going to click on the shape once and you'll see it becomes this dotted purple line. And then I'm going to click on it again. You need to wait just a little bit. It's not quite a double click. And you'll see this brings up the free transform tool. So this is just a convenient way to quickly move scale and rotate the drawing around. I'm going to click on this middle dot and I'm just going to drag the rectangle over to the location on my stock material where I want to do the cut. And you'll notice also that it automatically snaps as I approach the center of the material. So that can be really helpful for just quickly aligning things. And the last thing that I need to do is create the interior of the tray. So we need a smaller rectangle inside of this that we can hollow out. I'm going to use the offset tool. It's the bottom left on the drawing tab. I'm going to set the distance to half an inch and I'm going to offset inwards using the regular fillet. And then once I'm done, just like with any of the drawing tools, I'm going to hit close to exit back out to the main menu. Okay. So now the drawing is complete. This is everything we need, but we still need to describe how we want the machine to cut these shapes. So over on the right side, there's a toolpath tab that's closed by default. If you hover over it, it'll open up the toolpath menu. And then I like to hit the little pin button up at the top to keep the tab open. The first toolpath we need for the tray is a pocket toolpath. The button for the pocket tool path is the second from the left on the top row of tool path buttons. I'm going to set a cut depth of half an inch. 
And then I'm going to use the default quarter inch end mill, which I've adjusted just slightly for the IQ. I've set the feed rate to 100 inches a minute on this tool, and then I have a plunge rate that is a third of the feed rate, which is just a good rule of thumb for wood projects. This next setting here adjusts the strategy that's used for hollowing out the shape. What I want to do is follow the wood grain, which is going to be along the Y axis. So I'm going to choose roster and I'm going to set the angle to 90 degrees. Now I'll hit calculate and it's taken us over to the 3D preview. I'll preview later once I've finished all the toolpaths. So for right now, I'm just going to hit the close button and I'm going to switch back to the 2D view using the tabs in the top left corner. So as I was doing this, I realized I kind of want a rounded bottom edge to the tray. So I'm going to create a profile cut really quick to do that. The profile tool is the first toolpath button in the list. And again, I'm going to keep my cut depth at half an inch. In this case, I want to grab a quarter inch ball end tool. And in this next section, I'm going to choose to cut on the line. And then I'm going to hit calculate and it'll take us back over to the preview. So lastly, I need to create the outside profile cut. Again, I'm just going to start a new profile toolpath, and this time I'll set the cut depth to 0.76 inches, so just slightly through the material. So let's grab that quarter inch end mill and hit select. I'll choose to cut on the outside of the line in this case, and I'm going to turn on ramps. I have the settings for the ramp as smooth at a 15 degree angle, which you'll see what that does in a second. Calculate. All right, so now you can see in this preview the green line. This tool is going to gradually slide in to the profile cut instead of plunging, and that can improve tool longevity. So now I'm going to hit the Preview All Toolpaths button and see what this looks like. I can also move the preview around by dragging with the left mouse button. One last thing I'd like to touch on is how to go back and change toolpaths after you've calculated. In the bottom section of the toolpath menu, there is a list containing the three toolpaths that we've created. You can right click on any one of these toolpaths and then choose edit to make more adjustments. So let's just switch back to the 2D view. I'm going to find the bottom right button, which looks like a little floppy disk. And that's where we're going to save this out to the USB. I've chosen the IQ post processor from the dropdown menu to create the right kind of code for the machine that we're going to use. I'm going to click on each one of these toolpaths and hit the save toolpath button. And then I'm going to choose the USB as the location to save this. The last thing that we want to do is save the VCAR file itself. It's always important to remember that the code files that the machine reads are different from your working file that you'd want to make edits to with all of your drawings and tool paths. So make sure to go to File, Save As, and save the current project somewhere on your computer if you ever want to edit the file again in the future. All right, so we're all done here. Let's go out to the machine and uh, cut this project. So these are the three bits that we're working with on this project. We have a downcut end mill to hollow out the pocket. We have a compression bit, which is basically a downcut with a small section at the bottom. There's an upcut bit, so it squishes the material together. That's going to be used for the profile cut at the end. And then the third bit that we have there is the ball end bit that we're going to use to create that little radius on the inside of the pocket. So for the sake of just keeping this project nice and easy, we're going to use some double-sided tape. That's not the best solution, but for a little one-off project like this, it does get the job done. Turning on the machine. The IQ, like most inexpensive routers, is going to use stepper motors, which means at the beginning, when we first turn the machine on, we always want to home it. And that's how it knows where it is in reference to the home position. I can jog it around quickly using the X, Y, and Z buttons. Now I'm going to hit on, off, and menu at the same time to begin the tool touch off. And you can see that just like in the software, we told it that we were touching off to the bottom of the material. I've placed the puck on the spoil board, which is the surface under the material. And I'm going to go find the bottom left corner of my material because in the software, I chose the bottom left corner as my reference point. And now I'm going to hit the X, Y, zero button. And you'll see that that zeroes that location out. So that's where the file will start. Now I can put my USB in and find my file 
I'm going to hit Run, Pause, Delete, select U-Disk for the USB, and I'll just scroll down until I find the first file I want to cut. Hit OK. And now we can sit back for a little bit while it finishes the pocket cut. All right, so I'm going to change out this tool, do another tool touch off because we don't know the height of the new tool yet. And then I'll just select the second file and click OK to start the inside cut. All right, so now all that's left is one last tool change and tool touch off, and we can start our final profile cut. I hope that you found this video helpful, and I hope it gives you an idea about maybe what's involved with your own projects in the future. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear it in the comments section. And if you found this video helpful or you want to see more of this kind of stuff, please hit the like or subscribe buttons to let me know. And thanks for watching.